All right, I'm on. Hi there, Smart Drivers. Rick with Smart Drive Test talking to you tonight about how to find your dream job. Yes, the technique, skills, and procedures that you need to find yourself a job because the days of getting a job and having it for your entire life, those days are long gone. So tonight, we're going to help you out and give you that information. Stick around. We'll be right back. Hi there, Smart Drivers. Welcome back. Rick with Smart Drive Test talking to you tonight about skills and techniques and abilities that you need to be able to find your dream job, the job that you want to replace with the one you got because you hate the one you got. And that unfortunately happens that we get a job and we hate it. So we're a little different. We're a little farther away from uh, the driving task and those types of things. But for CDL drivers, uh, people who have a driver's license want to get a job with a freight company, deliver parcels, those types of things, this will definitely help you out. So uh, we're going to talk about that in the presentation tonight and then after the presentation uh, we'll come back we'll answer any questions you have about passing a driver's tests starting a career as a truck or bus driver or becoming a smarter safer driver so Corey's here bricks for wheels uh, mobile gaming that's Colin uh, moderators on the channel Corey's gonna do an excellent job of getting videos that I suggest for you that will give you more detail about anything that I'm talking about Ghost Rooster is here. My friend Margaret is here. Goose from Northern Ontario. <laughs> Goose, how cold is it in Northern Ontario? I bet you it's cold. Bill, how are you, my friend? And uh, who else is here? Permaculture is here as well. So there's a few people here as well. So again, if you have any questions at all, uh, leave a comment down in the comment section there. If it gets busy as it does uh, and I don't get to your question, then repeat your question leave me an arrow just say listen go back up and i'll check and make sure that uh, i get to your question and uh we'll get everybody's answers uh, the other thing you can do is leave a comment down in the comment section there if you're watching on the replay and uh, i'll get to your comments we do the best we can to answer those it's one of the things i like to think that makes smart drive test a little bit different than other channels here on YouTube is, is that we try to get back to as many of the comments as we can. Consider subscribing, consider hitting that thumbs up button for us. My friend Tim is here from DriveSmart BC. If you have absolutely any questions about driving, traffic law, and I'm trying to think, Tim, you had an article this week that I read on your website that I really liked. Oh, I know what it was. The article on why roads are closed so long after a crash and if any of you are wondering why there's that question or haven't really given that question a lot of thought Tim's got an excellent article over there maybe Tim you can drop the URL into the comments there or send it to me and or yeah you probably can't um, but it's over there just go over there and search on Tim's website and uh, really good article have a look at that that was a bit more convoluted than I want it to be but <laughs> <laughs> Tim's got an excellent website at DriveSmart BC, so definitely check that out if you live here in the province. Uh, my friend Rocky's here. How is it there in Winnipeg or Windsor? You live in Windsor. And Goose says it's a lovely evening for a stroll, only minus 13. Yes, as long as you bundle up. So, without further ado, let's get over to the presentation. As I said, it'll be about 10 or 12 minutes, and then we'll come back after that and uh, answer any questions you have about driving and all those sorts of things. Uh, Gandhi, need your suggestion. Could you please advise how can I fix my dead car battery due to freezing cold in Chicago? Is jumpstart only option? Uh, that is one uh, one way that you can get your dead battery going is to get it jump started. There we go. Corey put the link up for us for Drive Smart BC. There we go. Excellent. Thanks, Corey, for doing that. Uh, yes, uh, Gandhi dead battery, dead car battery in the wintertime, the one thing you can do is jump it with another vehicle. You can also get a battery charger. Uh, you can plug into an electrical outlet. I don't know what a, somebody else here on the um, one of the smart drivers might know what a battery charger is. I know that I use one here every now and again. <laughs> I forget to turn the lights out on my old buggy and kill the battery on it. Uh, and then unfortunately, Gandhi, your battery just might be done and you might have to replace the battery in your vehicle for 100 and Fifty dollars, I think in Chicago though you'd probably get one for about a hundred bucks on sale. I suspect. Okay, uh, Tyson, is it bad to take a G test in the middle of a snowstorm? Uh, Tyson, they're probably if the weather is bad 
uh, they're probably going to cancel any driver's tests that they have scheduled. All right, so let's get over to the presentation. I'll get through that, and then I'll come back and answer any questions that you might have about all the other stuff in the world here. Okay, so getting a job. Okay, and this is was initially directed towards CDL drivers, but I didn't want it to be just about CDL drivers uh, because there's lots of us who are looking for work. And I know that in my lifetime, I have put in many, many, many applications. Uh, Tim here at DriveSmart BC, even though he's a police officer, I'm sure that Tim put in applications within the organization to be promoted and those types of things. And this is the other thing that you're going to be up against is if you're working in a government organization, if you're working in a larger organization, you're going to have to apply for positions if you want to move sideways in a position or you want to move up to management or a different kind of position and those types of things. So you're going to have to know how to apply for a position, how to generate a resume, how to generate a cover letter, thank you notes, those types of things, and attend job interviews. So this is what we're talking about tonight. All right, so those of you who are new to the channel, my name is Rick August. Uh, was a truck driver through most of the 1990s, became a licensed commercial driving instructor in 1997. Worked teaching mostly truck driving. Air brakes is one of my expertise, as well as cars i did some driver rehabilitation training where i worked with people with disabilities to get them back to driving teaching them with hand controls and whatnot 2006 i graduated from the university of melbourne with a doctorate in legal history which is a study of policing courts and prisons as some of you may or may not know my expertise was in policing as it relates to traffic uh, while i was going to university i drove buses for greyhound so i've got bus experience as well and in 2015, I started the Smart Drive Test YouTube channel and the online business. So it's been really good and have been able to extend my reach and help a lot of people uh, get a driver's license, pass, uh, uh, pass their driver's license, get a job as a CDL driver, truck or bus driver, and uh, become safer, smarter drivers. You can find more information about me over at the Smart Drive Test website smartdrivetest.com slash PhD autobiography. New video this week is about stop sign intersections. I talk about two-way stop sign intersections, three ways, four ways, all way stop sign intersections. And uh, so that's the new video. Corey will put the link up for you there if you want to have a look at that. If you are going for a driver's test and that'll help you out with all of those crazy different configured intersections. Uh, Corey will put the link up for you as well for the Pass Your Driver's Test First Time Checklist. Head over to the Smart Drive Test website and make sure you pick that up to help you out. All right, so the first thing you need to decide when you're looking for work, and my friend Goose, who's a driving instructor, uh, as well, Tim over at Drive Smart BC, he also does uh, some classroom instruction with helping seniors who have to take the mandatory test at 80. Uh, some of them it's mandatory, some of them not but uh, helps them out with driver training as well. So if you wanna become a driving instructor, you wanna get a job as a truck or bus driver, and you don't have any experience, which makes it even more challenging and you need even more job search skills in place. So what you need to do first is you need to figure out what you can do, what you want to do. And this was the first thing that they did with me many, many years ago in the late 1990s when I wanted to move away from truck driving and become a driving instructor was I took a course at one of the community centers here uh, in London, Ontario, where I lived at the time, and it was an eight-week course on how to find a job. And this was the first thing that they said to us. What do you want to do? What do you want to work at? And I was like, well, I don't really know. I just want a job. Because that's hard work. That's personal work that we have to do to figure out what we want to do, right? Because as it says here in blue text here, it says if you're looking for a job and everything, you won't get anything right? Because employers want to know what you can do, right? They don't want to do that hard work because they just don't have that kind of work anymore. So you got to figure out what you want. Uh, and the reason that my friend Bill Walker is in the thumbnail up there at the top is because Bill Walker is my poster child in terms of getting a job. He trained with me six years ago at the truck driving school. He left the truck driving school on a Friday and the next Tuesday he was working in the oil fields in Northern Alberta. And there's a whole playlist here. Corey will put that up for you on Bill Walker and how he was able to find a job. And we're gonna talk about networking and those types of things. And I do counsel you, uh, if you're looking for a job or those types of things, uh, consider a job as a truck driver. 
Uh, you know, if you're working at Walmart or something like that and you just don't like your job, whatever you're doing, you're working in sales, you're working in customer service, working on a cashier, those types of things, consider a job as a truck driver. There's a lot of good reasons there. And Corey's put these videos up for you as well. You can have a look at those and that'll help you out to consider whether you want to do that. So if you're trying to figure out what you want to do as your next job, these are a couple of books that I would suggest to you. Jack Canfield's The Su Success Principle. Jack Canfield is a motivational speaker. He is best known for Chicken Soup for the Soul. Most of you may or may not know about that. He wrote that series. He's been very successful as an, art, uh, uh, an author. rather. So have a look at that book. The other one is, is What Color Is Your Parachute? There's a lot of really good exercises in that book that will help you out in terms of figuring out what you want to do for a career, what you want to work at for a job or those types of things. And, you know, we now live in the information age with the access to the Internet. And I mean, this is why you're all here and you show up for my live stream every week because you're looking for information. You're looking for ideas. So start doing your research. What do you want to do? Go on the Internet. Talk to people in the profession that you want to go for, you know, and figure out what you need to do, what kind of education you need, what kind of qualifications you need. Do inter informational interviews. This is not something that we ever hear about or talk about. I'd heard about these, you know, during this course about informational interviews. If you want to do something, then you simply call up a person who's in the profession. For example, if you want to become a medical doctor and you want to become a surgeon in in uh, infectious diseases for example then you go and interview a medical doctor who has a specialty in infectious diseases and figure out what the path is that you have to go so you have to go back to school you have to get an undergraduate degree you have to go to medical school you have to do an internship so you know it's the only thing between you and success is time and space Right? You figure out what you want to do, you, you plan the work, you work the plan, and eventually, it, with enough determination and gumption, you're going to get there. Okay, So, how do you get there? You, you have to do some retraining, you have to go back to school, whether it's conventional school, you have to go back to high school and you have to do some courses. You can do courses online, uh, through correspondence. Uh, that's kind of old school thinking, what I'm, I'm thinking about where they send you the courses in the mail. Uh, it's before the internet. You could go to vocational school. For example, if you want to become a plumber, then you got to go back to college. You got to take some courses in college. You got to do an internship, and it's going to take you about five years be before you become a journeyman plumber and are able to work as a plumber. Now, if you want to become a medical doctor, then you've got to go to university. If you want to become a CDL truck driver, uh, driving a truck or bus, then you go and get some certifications. You go to vocational school for six to eight weeks. And then, uh, you know, you get your certifications along with that. You get your uh, transportation to dangerous goods certification. You get your bus passenger certification. You get your tanker certification. And all of that will help you to get a job. And you do, and you get on the job experience, especially if you want to be a plumber or a carpenter or a, tra a skilled tradesperson. Then you have to do on the job experience as part of your training to move towards that job, that position that you want to do. All right, so when you start looking for a job, the other thing that you need to keep in mind is, is that you're selling an asset. You are that asset, and you need to convince the employer that it is worthwhile for them to hire you. They, when you come, you are going to show up to work, you're going to do the work, and they're not going to have to be harassing you every day. So know that you are selling yourself, and you need to know that that you have a lot of skill sets, you have a lot of motivation and those types of things. And the other thing with employees when you're selling yourself, remember, a lot of people can be trained, but they can't be motivated. So if you demonstrate to the employer that you are motivated and you are willing to do the work and do whatever it takes to get to where you wanna be and have the job that you want, a lot of employers will say, hey, you know, we're willing to put in the training if you're motivated and you're determined and you're going to show up. You can't teach that, but you can teach on the job skills and those types of things. All right. So where are the jobs? And this is the thing that I talked about in the promotion of this live stream tonight is that 75% of jobs are not advertised. Okay. So where are they? They're online at all kinds of uh, internet sites that do job advertising online at Kijiji, Craigslist, company websites, 
and you want to do networking you want to do cold calling so as soon as you figure out what you want to do going back to my friend Bill Walker who wanted to be a truck driver in northern Alberta Bill worked at a auto parts shop on the counter and everybody that came in he was talking to them and Bill was very much a people person he was very you know he was easy to talk to and those types of things and he would talk to his customers and those types of things and he would say hey you know do you know anybody in northern alberta who's showing who's looking for a truck driver because i'm looking for work in truck driver i'm going to finish truck driving school next week and i'm looking for a job okay so networking cold calling these are where the jobs are right <laughs> and cold calling is the most effective way to find a job but it's the hardest thing to do because <laughs> as he says in the image here ad phone ain't gonna dial itself all right so cold calling you have to get past the gatekeeper you have to get if if you're looking for a job as a truck driver for example you have to get to the operations manager and there's there's a receptionist and you have to get past the receptionist and even if you get denied by the receptionist or she or he says that the operations manager is busy you need to be very polite to these people because these people can be on your side. So be very cordial, okay? When you get on the phone, if you're not confident in talking to somebody, just you know, trying to create a conversation out of thin air is essentially what you're trying to do. Rehearse, introduce yourself. Ask if you can have a couple of minutes of their time, okay? Give your little spiel, okay? I'm in truck driving school. I'm looking for a job as a truck driver. Uh, is there anything available? Might you be interested in talking to me or can I bring in my resume and drop it off and those types of things. So ask your questions and then if they say no, we're not looking for anybody, ask them at the end. The conversation's not over when they say no. Say, listen, uh, do you know anybody else that I could ap apply to or those types of things? Because whatever industry you're in, the people that you're talking to are going to know the other people in the industry. They're going to know their competitors. So they will say, you know, phone Dave over at VanCam or phone, uh, you know, phone John, uh, you know, down at Schneider National or whatever. So make sure that you ask them if they can refer you to somebody else. And then follow up. It's very important that you follow up and you say very politely to them, can I call you back in a month? And then put it in your calendar, put it in the reminders. If you got an iPhone or you got an Android, put it in your phone, put it in your reminder. So in a month, you call them back and you say, listen, you know, I was talking to you a month ago. Uh, you know, is there anything available? Did anything come up? And those types of things. Make sure that you follow up. Okay. Busy, busy people. So networking and cold calling. And this is what we're talking about right now. As soon as a company drops an advertisement for a job, online or drops an advertisement in the local paper or on a job board this is what the application pile looks like and especially if it's a job that's going to pay 50 60 70 thousand dollars a year <laughs> and the poor person who has been assigned to going through the resumes and applications is just like oh my god i gotta do this <laughs> they're dreading going through this pile of paper so if you get on the phone and you're networking and you're cold calling, you are doing them a favor because they don't have to do this because you've already beat the rush. You got there 10 minutes before everybody else and they're going to say, yes, here it is. This person is qualified. I'm going to hire this person because they do not want to be in that slush pile. So you want to stay out of the slush pile and by cold calling, by networking, and as Tim says here, uh, connections through families and friends this is gonna beat you this is gonna get you ahead of the pile this is gonna get you so you don't land in the slush pile because this is this is the nightmare of the person who's uh, working in human resources this is the person who's responsible for hiring they do not want to face this stack of resumes okay so resumes cover letters thank yous if you are not any good with computers, for those of you who might be looking for a truck driving job or semi-skilled labor, whatnot, go on Fiverr, get somebody to type up your cover letter and your resume. Uh, you know, there's lots of businesses around in your local towns and those types of things that will do this sort of work for you. Uh, resumes in this day and age should be one page unless you're a professional. Uh, then maybe two or three pages, but for the most part, one page. Remember, people are busy, and it's kind of like an hors d'oeuvre 
at supper time. It's just a taste of what you can offer them. If you have an application that the company wants you to fill out, ask them for two. Don't sit there and fill them out right then. Take them home, fill them out, and then you can have one that's filled out all the time and you have all of the information that you need to fill out an application. Uh, if you can, have a cover letter and there's, if you go over to the employment tab on the Smart Drive Test website there, Corey, there's an example of resumes and cover letters that you can use over there and that will help you out to find a job, okay? References, if you have references, don't put them on your initial application, just say references available upon request. If they do call you back, as oftentimes they will if they get in touch with you in terms of references, make sure that you call your references and say, hey, uh, I put in an application for a job at, you know, Atco Inc. Uh, they're probably going to phone you. Then they have a heads up. Make sure that you send your resume and your cover letter to your reference as well so they know what you're applying for and what skills they might have to uh, give a reference on. So know that as well. Thank you notes. I'll talk more about this in the question and answer period. But it's very important within a day or so to send a thank you note as well for considering your application, okay? And as I said before, I talk about this a little bit more, make sure that you follow up. You know, if you say, listen, can I call you back in a month? And I'll, as I said, I'll tell you a story about this in question and answer period. Keep track of your uh, applications and reminders. Use reminders on your phone or on your computer. Uh, and then, okay, and... This is going to get you a job. I'll tell you right now, following up and, you know, not following up for a week, following up for a month. This is tantamount to these videos that you see on YouTube where the guy celebrates or the woman celebrates, but he's usually a guy, uh, before they cross the finish line in a, in a major race. And then the person comes up behind him and sneaks across the line. And then they come in second because <laughs> they celebrated before they got to the line. This is what like not following up is like. So do that. All right, so the interview process, and we can talk a little bit more about this. If you're successful in your cover letter, successful in your application, uh, you know, and they say, listen, we want you to come in, for, come in for an interview for the job. Ask how many people are going to be interviewing you because there's nothing more intimidating when you're thinking, oh, I'm going to show up for one person's going to interview me and you go into a room and there's six people sitting there who are going to interview, you know, the operations manager, person from HR, a fellow driver, you know, because it's a union shop or whatnot. You know, that could be a bit intimidating when you walk into an interview and there's four other people there. So, no, so ask them how many people are going to be there. Make sure that you bring your application, your resume, your cover letter, any other certificate, certificates that you have or might need to show or produce. Okay. Uh, is there a second interview? How long before they contact you after the interview? And if you're not successful in getting the job, then I always suggest that you call them back and get a debrief. You know, what did I did wrong? What could I improve? Uh, do I need a little bit more experience or another certification or those types of things? Because, you know, it, it does help for sure in future and applying for another job and getting another job. All right. So good luck on your driver's test. And remember, pick the best answer, not necessarily the right answer. So we'll get back over here. There we go. All right. And Goose, if I hadn't followed up with my application, I would not have got an interview for the job I currently have. So exactly what Goose says, you need to follow up. You need to call them back. And you're not being edgy. You're not being pushy. Uh, when you're following up, as I said, people are incredibly busy. I mean, we're all busy. <laughs> I'm incredibly busy. And, you know, I probably get 30, 40 emails a day. And, you know, it's not that I don't want to get back to you. It's just, you know, I'm running a business. I've got uh, con consultation clients. Uh, I've got a YouTube channel. <laughs> I've got a team around me of people. You know, and, uh, you know, so I'm busy. And it's not just me, it's employers who, you know, have their kind of daily routine. And you have to understand that for those of you, for example, that we're sticking with truck drivers or bus drivers, the operations manager, right? The operations manager is making, is responsible for making sure all the drivers are showing up, that all the buses and vehicles are going out every day. If there's a crash, the operations manager is usually one doing the investigation. And then all of a sudden they need to hire a couple of drivers, two or three drivers. 
you know, the operations management is also responsible for training and the oversight of all of that. And now you kind of throw in this extra thing on top of that where he or she has to find another employee, another bus driver. <laughs> They're just going, oh my God. Oh my God. So there's a lot of stuff going on and you are not bothering them. You are actually helping them out. So if you can think in that way, when you're looking for a job and you're cold calling and you're networking, you are helping them out. <laughs> As Tim says, even us old retired guys are busy. And Tim is incredibly busy. Uh, you know, <laughs> and uh, you know, I've heard people say that before, Tim, who've retired and they're like, oh yeah, my life's going to be all, and it's like, they're just crazy busy. And I know Tim is really busy. He's got his website. He's doing teaching. He's doing consulting. Uh, so yeah, super busy. I hear you. Uh, Margaret, I need help steering. Hand over hand is confusing to me and I always default to push pull and it's making it difficult when I'm turning. Uh, okay. So, uh, Margaret, are, are you having difficulty like physically manipulating the steering wheel? What is it about hand over hand that's giving you grief? Is it kind of like just pulling the steering wheel? Because the only time that you, you, yeah, okay. Or is it the fact, Margaret, that you might not be looking where you want the car to end up? Because sometimes with new drivers, who are learning to drive is, is that you get so kind of focused in on the steering wheel that you're not looking where you're going. And sometimes if you just focus on where you're going and where you want the vehicle to end up, the steering wheel will look after itself. Okay. All right. Elias, I live in Alberta and wondering how easy it is to get a job in the Grand Prairie oil patch as a newly passed class one. Should I consider getting necessary tickets to get a job as a refresh, as a fresher? Uh, so Elias, I'm not, you know, it's to get a job as a new driver, it's challenging, okay? It's challenging because insurance companies have said to these trucking companies that we won't insure you with any drivers less than two years experience. But again, as I said to you, you have to show the company that you're motivated and you, you do that by cold calling, you do that by networking. And as Tim said, you talk to your friends, you talk to your family, you talk to anybody within your three foot circle, okay? And this comes from sales, right? <laughs> if you were three feet, I mean, not so much right now with the stupid pandemic, of course, it's six feet away. But if there's anybody, you talk to them and you say, listen, I'm looking for a job as a truck driver. Do you know anybody who might be hiring somebody as a truck driver, right? And that's essentially what you're going to have to do, Elias, for looking for a job in the oil fields. Because this is what Bill did. He worked, like I said, he worked at an auto parts store on the counter. And anybody that he came in, he talked to and he said, listen, I'm looking for a job as a truck driver in the oil fields. And he was still at truck driving school. And this is the other thing for anybody who's watching this now or watching this on the replay. If you were in truck driving school, the day that you start truck driving school, you start looking for a job. <laughs> yes, I know that you're incredibly overwhelmed by the amount of learning and stuff that they're throwing at you at truck driving school, but the, the, the end goal here is for you to get a job. And if you're not looking for a job, you're not going to get a job because they don't just come to you to find a job. And unfortunately, with people who are going to truck driving school to become truck drivers or bus drivers, I've heard so many of them say to me, and I know lots of people who do, that three months later, four months later, they still haven't found a job. And the reason I, I know the reason that they haven't found a job is because the only thing that they're applying for is what's online and what's on job boards. You saw the slush pile. The problem with that is, is that by the time they get there and they apply, now they don't have any experience. And now they're behind 12 other people who've got three or four years experience. They're never going to get hired. You need to get on the phone you need to talk to people. You need to talk to these operations managers in the truck driving school. That's what you need to do. So Corey, you've put the video up for Steering Smart. Thank you for doing that. Margaret, not sure, but I start out with hand over hand and then forget and add push pull when I'm turning. Uh, okay. So um, Margaret, 
Are you letting the wheel, are you just opening your fingers and keeping your hands in contact with the steering wheel, letting it slide back? Or are you trying to manipulate the steering wheel back? Because essentially when you go around a corner, it's just one and a half turns on the steering wheel, right? Boom, and you're there. And you're going around the corner and then you open your fingers, keep your palms in contact with the steering wheel, let it slide back. And maybe a little bit of adjustment, but for the most part, that's all you should have, okay? Uh, Elias, you're most welcome. Okay, uh, Trucker, uh, air brake and learners pass. Thanks, Rick. Your videos helped a lot. Uh, Trucker, you're most welcome, my friend. So glad that we could help out, and thank you for dropping back and letting us know. Uh, Stevie, you're in California in the Bay Area. Excellent. Okay, Ben, I'm interested in truck driving. How do I start off for new drivers? What do I need to do for get training? Okay, so Ben, the first thing you need to do is you need to pass a CDL learner's license and you'll also have to get a medical done to make sure that you can actually, in fact, uh, apply for a truck driving license. So make sure, get the vet medical done because I see you've got a couple of health issues there. You just wanna make sure that your, your health isn't gonna preclude you from getting a license. So get your learners done first. Odie, me and my wife learned a lot from all your vlogs. We both don't know how to drive. Two years ago now, we are confident because of your effort and time sharing your knowledge. Odie, thank you so much. I'm so happy to hear that we could help out both you and your wife to get your license and learn how to drive. That's that's really awesome. Uh, uh, so Goose says, I always uh, go through the yellow pages and cold call for a job. It always worked. Exactly. And uh, just adding to that Goose, myself personally, uh, all of the jobs I ever got were through cold calling or networking. And I'll tell you a job, when I was doing the course, the six week course, so the, so just back up here one, one step. There's been three, three courses in my lifetime that have been fundamental life skills. So one was in high school, I took typing and I'm not sure why I took typing when I was in high school for three years. But little did I know that I'd be sitting in front of a computer for my whole life as a job. Uh, so that was one. The second one was the job search course that I did that was eight weeks long down at the community services place. That was the second one. And then the third one was uh, managing anger in the family. It was a course that I took with one of the community outreach programs here in town. So those are the three kind of life courses that I've taken. And the second one was that second one was job search skills. And it was an eight week course. You had to show up every day from nine to five and you had to look for a job while you were doing this course. And they taught you all these things, right? And so you had to spend an hour, a couple hours a day doing cold calling. And at this time, uh, I had just finished the driving instructor course. This was 1990, 1998. So it was a year after I'd finished my driving instructor course, but I couldn't get a, a job as a driving instructor because in Ontario, it's a little weird because you're certified as a truck driving instructor, an air brake instructor, but you're not licensed. You're licensed as a car driver. So I kind of went at it backwards and got my certification to teach truck driving, but I didn't have the license yet. So nobody would hire me. So I'm cold calling and I cold call London Transit which is the bus company, <laughs> the city bus. And I said, listen, I'm a driving instructor, blah, blah, blah. Uh, this is what I do. This is where I'm at. Can, and uh, do you have any jobs? They said, no. I said, okay, uh, can I drop off my resume and cover letter? And they said, yeah, sure. I said, okay. Um, and I figured out who it was. It was Bob Johnson, who was the operations manager. I said, listen, uh, Bob, are you gonna be around tomorrow at 10 o'clock? Can I come in at 10 o'clock and drop off my resume? Yeah, sure. So the next morning I get all dressed up, you know, tie, suit, jacket, went in to London Transit because, you know, I was fairly esteemed, you know, it's a transit authority. And uh, I said to the receptionist, I said, oh, it's Bob Johnson here. I want to talk to the operations manager. They said, uh, he's in a meeting. And I said, oh, okay. I said, can I wait? They said, yeah, sure, you can wait. And so I waited two hours for Bob Johnson, the operations manager. And finally showed up, I got three minute interview. I got what's called the mini interview, right? Shook his hand, say hi, this is who I am. I'm a driving instructor. I'm looking for work as a driving instructor or as a safety officer. 
Uh, yeah, we don't have anything right now, but we'll keep your resume on file. You know, the standard pat answer. So I got a phone call the next day. They said, would you be interested in doing work uh, on a contract basis? I said, yeah, absolutely. And they said, uh, we have new, this was in the late 1990s when low floor buses came in that were wheelchair accessible. They said, we need somebody to write curriculum to teach people about people with disabilities and to do the training, the preliminary, the prototype training, because they had a couple of trainers on staff that were gonna take it over. And I said, yeah, sure, I'd be interested. And I came in and talked to them and I got a eight week contract to do this work uh, to develop curriculum for low floor buses. And uh, you know, through cold calling, through showing up and doing my mini uh, interview, uh, and that's what you wanna do. And that's exactly what you wanna do when you're networking, when you're cold calling, you're talking to the person on the line, blah, 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 asking them, you say, listen, can I drop off my resume? And they're like, yeah, sure, you can drop off your resume. And you say, listen, is today at three o'clock okay? Are you gonna be there? Can I drop it off then? And they say, yeah, sure. Get dressed up, go in, and at the time, because this is all important, because you showed up at the time you said you were gonna be there, you get a little job interview, because now they have a face to put to the resume. You're not in that big stack of slush, right? And you're not gonna get forgotten. Now they have a face to the paper, to the name. So now you're way ahead of the queue, right? And after you hand it to them and they say, thank you, we'll keep it on file. You're very polite. You already asked them who other people you might approach are and those types of things. And you say, listen, uh, can I follow up in three weeks or a month? And they're like, yeah, sure, for example. And you just like right away, put it in your phone as a reminder, four weeks, call whomever, you know, Barbara Smith at ADCO. And in four weeks, you call them up and say, listen, I talked to you, I dropped off my resume. Is there anything available? Those types of things, all right? So do that. All right. Uh, Excellent. Okay. Dr. Rick, what is your assessment options regarding the massive accident that happened in Fort Worth, Texas? Any tips for views? So it won't happen next time. Okay. So that definitely I have <laughs> ideas about what happened in Texas, uh, ice and, you know, freeway and those types of things. So, uh, Corey, I'll put up the video on being rear ended. I talk about freeways and what happens if that happens to you on a freeway. Turabai, I had a class one uh, with in Quebec, uh, bad experience. Uh, I had experience in Italy and Canada. I don't have experience. All companies don't give jobs for I am tired. What are you doing, sir? Okay, so again, you gotta do the networking. You gotta do the cold calling. You get on the phone, you gotta talk to these people. You say, listen, can I drop off my resume? You get your little mini interview. You go in and drop it off face to face. And I'll tell you another story about truck drivers. We had a guy that left the truck driving school in Kelowna. He wanted to work for one of the trucking companies in Kelowna. It was a specific company that he wanted to work for. And what happened was, uh, and I've told this story before, that uh, he went down. They said, no, we, don't, we can't hire new drivers. He said, okay. Uh, he said, you mind if I just sit here and wait? He says, because I'm willing to do anything. He says, I don't care. He says, you got a pickup truck, I'll drive that. He says, whatever. Uh, excellent. Thanks so much, Tim. Have a great night. Enjoy, enjoy dinner, my friend. So he went down to the trucking company, sat there. Nothing happened the first day. Nothing happened the third day. He came back, or the second day. Nothing happened the second day. The third day he came back. And uh, he was sitting in the office, not doing anything, reading a book or whatever he was doing to pass the time. And uh, the operations manager came out and he said, one of our drivers didn't show up. He said, uh, can, you, can you run this load down to Peachland? He says, yeah, I can do that. And uh, so he ran the load down to Peachland, came back. They said, you know, just stay in touch and uh, you know, we'll call you. So they called him again. The next day, the driver didn't show up again. He got some part-time work for a couple of weeks and within three weeks, he was working full-time for this company. Because as I said to you, Companies can train you how to do the job. They can't teach motivation. They can't teach determination. They can't teach you to show up because believe it or not, <laughs> the biggest problem, and, and some of the smart drivers were saying this earlier, is showing up. Showing up is 75% of the job. Showing up, just showing up on time and being reliable. Do you know how hard it is to get reliable employees that will show up on time? It's incredibly hard. 
So show up, do the work. So Stevie, uh, they told me in February, send my DMV printout, showed up with my garbage uniform, talked to the manager six months ago, came last two weeks ago, uh, face to face. Uh, okay, so you, so Stevie, you were able to get a job. Is that what you're saying? I think that's what you're saying here, my friend. Okay, uh, Stevie, I'm trying to get into stateside construction, street sweeping. I went to the company a year ago. Okay, so yeah, so uh, Stevie, you just got to keep following up, and I'll tell you a story about following up on a job. <laughs> I was looking for a job years ago, and it was this one company I wanted to work for as a safety officer this was back when I was looking for a job as a safety officer so put my application in followed up the first first month followed up the second month it was very good followed up the third month I followed up the fourth month the fifth month I didn't follow up because I was still looking for a job life happened something else happened didn't follow up the fifth month the sixth month the ad appears in the paper had I followed up the fifth month, I probably would have got the job. So, <laughs> uh, so Stevie, yes, so they said next month. Okay, so Stevie, you just got to put it in your phone, set yourself a reminder, and phone them back because it's exactly the story that I just tell, told about me not following up on the fifth month. And because I didn't follow up on the fifth month, I didn't get the job. So again, Stevie, it comes back to the fact it's not that they're putting you off. It's just that they're busy. And for the sweet street sweeping company, you know, uh, you know, they just get busy. They get doing other things. There's bureaucracy, there's red tape, there's all kinds of goofy things in the way. So just keep following up every month. Okay. Every four weeks, follow up, follow up, be very polite. Say, thank you for your time. And can I call you back again in three weeks and make sure you follow up because you will eventually get the job, my friend. Now here's the other piece goals, motivation, and support. All right. As I said, I followed up the first month. I didn't follow. I followed up the second month, the third month, the fourth month, the fifth month. I didn't follow up. Okay. How are you going to keep yourself motivated? How are you going to, where's your support groups, right? Because we all need support groups, right? It's the same thing with what I do here, right? I'm sitting behind a microphone in, in front of my computer talking to you. And you know, some days it can be pretty lonely. How do I keep motivated? I mean, I'm fortunate that I have a lot of kind of life experience of working on my own and working independently and those types of things. But for some of us, we don't have that. And I mean, it's not just that, right? The fact that I have life experience. It's also the fact that I have a support group around me, right? So who are your support people? Are they your parents? Is it your spouse? Is it your children? Is for me, uh, I, you know, most of you know that I study jujitsu, martial arts. I've been involved in martial arts for a lot of years. Uh, my jujitsu club, the people that I train with three, four times a week, that's another part of my support group. And it just gets me out of my head, right? And gets me so that I can have kind of a mental break. So you need to think about when you're going for your dream job, when you're going for the job that you want to do, who is your support group, right? Because you need that. You need these people to kind of hurrah, go, go, go. Did you did you set your goals of putting out two resumes today? Uh, did you set your goal of making five cold calls today? Uh, you know, because you need to you need to have those goals in place. You need to keep track of those goals. You know, just keep it in a calendar that yes, I made my five cold calls today because it's those little steps that are gonna eventually get you your dream job because it might take six months, a year for you to get to your dream job. So think about that. What is your motivation? What are your goals? And who is my support group? What are my support groups, right? And make sure that you're exercising. Make sure that you get up in the morning. Uh, you know, make sure that you get up, get dressed, shave, you know, uh, for women. Put on your makeup, those types of things, because all of this is going to make you feel better when you're doing your job. Because, you know, after three, four months, this can all kind of wear on you a little bit. So make sure that you have all of that in place when you're looking for a job. Okay. Uh, Gandhi, hi, Rick. Sorry, one last question. How can we get rid of tailgaters? I really get afraid of them. 
and start increasing my speed. I really get nervous. I uh, need your expert advice. Okay, so Gandhi, uh, tailgaters are going to happen. And one of the, the, the number one skill for dealing with tailgaters is you want to increase the space in front of your vehicle because now you're driving not just for you, but for the goofball behind you, okay? All right, Margaret. <laughs> Margaret doesn't wear makeup, so she's not going to get up and put her makeup on to be finding, looking for a job. All right. But, you know, maybe brush your hair and put it back in a ponytail or whatnot, right? Okay. Uh, sorry, Gandhi. So, yes, tailgaters, increase the space in front of you. That way you're not going to do aggressive braking and aggressive turns and those types of things. And just stay calm because if they're tailgating you, they just want to go faster than you and they're just going to pull around you and they're going to be gone very shortly anyway. They're not going to stay there, okay? All right. Uh, ben, how much difference is it for me driving for myself versus working for a trucking company when I'm on meds for my condition? Uh, like I said, Ben, the first the first question you want to answer is, is are the are those prescription medications going to preclude you from passing the medical? So get the medical done and then you can move forward from there. Uh, Lucky, you're most welcome, my friend. Thank you so much. Okay, let's see what else. Epic, uh, speaking of driving a dump truck, is there a way to obtain a CDL Class A without an O restriction, which restricts you from doing a fifth wheel equipped C... Uh, Epic, you're, if you're not going to have a fifth wheel connection, it's going to be very limited in driving a truck because most vehicles are going to be uh, fifth wheel connections. Uh, in all the years that I drove truck, I never did a pintle hook. Okay, I know how to do it. In theory, I've seen videos on it. I've seen instruction on it and those types of things. But I've never actually hooked up a trailer to a pintle hook. Uh, it's always been fifth wheel for me. Okay. All right. Excellent. Uh, so Stevie's got his dream job going there. Excellent. Excellent. And like I said, Stevie, you just keep following up. Uh, get yourself more certifications and those types of things. And... Mm -hmm. Just on that note, with what Stevie's talking about, about his dream job, it's the same thing with what happened to me with being a driving instructor. I couldn't get a job as a driving instructor. This was one of the reasons why after I got my certification to be a commercial driving instructor in the province of Ontario, I was going for a safety officer because no truck driving school would hire me because I didn't have enough experience and I didn't have the right certification. It took me a year before I kind of figured out Hey, wait a minute. And then the opportunity presented it myself. I got laid off for my job, which is which is a nice way of saying that I was fired. <laughs> no longer required. Services no longer required. But they were nice enough that they put me on unemployment. So when they put me on unemployment, what happened was I called up the government agencies and I said, listen, you know, I'm on unemployment. I want to do this course so I can get my license, my driving instructor's license. And the employment agency said, okay, uh, we'll pay for the tuition. We'll continue to pay you unemployment benefits. You have to pay for accommodations in Toronto because it was in Toronto where I had to go and stay. And I was like, awesome. And off I went. I got my license. I, I spent three weeks and got my license, my driving instructor's license uh, in Toronto. As soon as I got my driving instructor's license, then I got a job at a truck driving school as a, as a, as a truck driving uh, instructor. I needed one more certification. So maybe there's one more thing that you need in order to get a little bit more experience or there's one thing more that you need to get another certification in, or yeah, another certification in order to get that job that you want. And that's what happened with me was I needed one more thing. Okay, uh, Brian, are tandem dump trucks worth getting into? Um, all right, so Brian, when you say tandem dump trucks, are you talking about tandem axle on the back of the dump truck or are you talking about a dump truck with a trailer on it, which is a truck and pop? Those, those are two different things. Uh, Gandhi, you're most welcome. Okay. <laughs> I'm still laughing about Margaret and her no makeup. Uh, okay. Aggressive, you can pull over safely. Yes, and that's, that's your other option, as Goose just said there. Thank you for that goose is, you know, if tailgaters are really just getting on you, then just pull off the side of the road and let them go past. Uh, ben, at least I was able to get my regular driver's license. That's a big accomplishment. Uh, I'm able to drive in the first place and proud of myself for doing all the work that I did. And yes, absolutely. 
Uh, okay, so Brian, Class B, no trailer? Yes, uh, absolutely. Uh, Brian, now, Brian, if you're going to go and do a Class B and you're going to get a street truck license, I might get you to consider getting your tractor trailer license because if you have a dump truck pulling a trailer, now you're into a class one vehicle, you're into a class A vehicle. And you're gonna be more employable because I don't, you know, I know there's different kind of cultures and those types of things, but I know here where I live in British Columbia and other places, dump trucks are now almost all going to pups. Uh, they're going to pups with dump trailers on them. They're going to transfer uh, bins, which is a trailer that has a box on it. And they'll go to the quarry, they'll load up the box, they'll load up the dump truck. They'll come to the job site where they are. They'll unhook the trailer. They drive into the site. They dump the truck. They come back out. And then the box is kind of cool. On the trailer is on a, a rail system. And it slides into the back of the truck. And then they go in and dump it. And they bring it back out. And they put it back on the trailer. So you're going to be more employable with a class one. If you can do it. If you can wrangle it. If you can make it work. In the end, your return on investment is going to be bigger. Now, if you are just going to go for a Class B to drive a dump truck, absolutely. There's 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 companies out there that will hire you. Okay, so definitely I would counsel you to go and do that. You're, it's going to work out for you. Uh, Rocky, I wish to work at McDonald's, my favorite place to eat, but I can't right now. It's due to the pandemic. Good news, though, I'm co-opting from home now every weekend. Now I become a housekeeper. <laughs> and Rocky, you know, I'm not laughing at you. When my whole life went sideways there six years ago, I had a friend who had a cleaning company and that's what I was doing. And sometimes life goes sideways and when life goes sideways, you're gonna do anything that you need to do to pay the rent, keep food on the table and keep moving forward. But you're always moving forward, right? You're always trying to improve. It's kind of that 1%, one thing a day, you know? We're gonna improve ourselves one day at a time. 1% one thing at a time and that's what happened right I started the smart drive test YouTube channel at the time the online business and you know it's been wildly more successful than I could have ever imagined five or six years ago because I can remember I did the hand signal video uh, you know and it's a little one and a half minute video and I remember saying to my good friend Tim who runs cyber salt communications and hosts my site and does all of the website stuff for me I remember saying to him nobody will ever watch this because it's not sexy. Traffic safety is not sexy. <laughs> and you know, very happily, I can say here five, six years later, I can say that I was I was wrong. I was dead wrong. And I am happy to say that I was because I've managed to help a lot of people. So, uh, Ben, my specialty at driving is slow speed maneuvers. And you know, Ben, if you can do slow speed maneuvers, that's really gonna help you out and make you a better driver overall. Uh, Stevie, my wife told me the same thing. I wish I would have got my class A license. Uh, Stevie, it's not too late. Uh, you know, it's, it's never too late. And you know, Stevie, it was the same thing with me. Uh, same thing for Brian there. You know, I was no different. I was no different. I went and got my, my class three, my class B license for a street truck. Uh, and then I went and got my tractor trailer license. I wish somebody had told me, given me that advice uh, and said, listen, just go get your class one, just go get your class A license. I didn't, but I did go back and get it later. So, uh, so you know, that's the other thing that you can do, right? And that goes back to, again, uh, you know, when I went back to get my driving instructor's license so I could get a job as a driving instructor, the other thing that I did, and this is the thing that you wanna do, right? For anybody who's watching this now or watching this on the replay and you're looking for your dream job, just because they say no now, doesn't mean they're gonna say no in another year, in another two years. And while you're waiting for them to say yes, you're, you're making your rope longer, right? That's what you gotta do. You gotta increase your reach. You gotta increase your skill set. And that's what I was doing when I was becoming a driving instructor. Ben, good night, my friend. Thank you so much uh, for your contribution. And thanks for being part of the Smart Driver community. It's always a pleasure, my friend. So the other thing that I did in the province of Ontario was uh, that they had school bus, right? And I knew as a driving instructor, one of the, the things that I was gonna be doing was teaching how to drive school buses. 
I went and got my school bus license as well because it was a separate license uh, from tractor trailer and from buses. So I went and got my tractor, my, my bus license as well, went and got my driving instructor's license. So I was building my skill set. I was getting more certifications to become a driving instructor. So while you're doing your job search, while you're working towards your dream job, while you're still following up with people and putting in applications and putting in resumes, you're building your skill set towards the job that you want to do. So for example, you want to work at McDonald's, right? You learn more about food prep. Maybe take a say food handling course, right? Talk to the managers at McDonald's and say, listen, what do I need to do to be able to get a job here? Uh, maybe you need to go back to high school. Maybe you need to get your grade, grade 12 uh, equivalency course uh, because you dropped out of, out of high school to go and get a job and those types of things. So you're always building your skill set. You're always moving forward. You're always moving towards your goal, right? And then again, c comes back to your goals, your motivation, and your support. You know, what are your goals? You're doing a little bit every day because that little bit adds up. You've got support, you've got your spouse, you've got your friends, you've got your martial arts clubs, you've got your running club, your bicycle club, right? Your car club, whatever. You've got your supports in place and you've got your motivation and you're working on building your skill set so that you're every day 1% closer to getting a yes from the people that you want to get a job from, okay? Master, hi, I want to know, do you train people who want to be truck drivers? Uh, master, I do online. I don't do any uh, in-vehicle training, but I do here <laughs> do, do it on, online. So uh, anything that you need help with, I can certainly help you out with in terms of pointing you in the right direction and helping you out with, with certain things. Uh, Epic, uh, I want to go to trucking, which is one... Uh, better driving a sanitation truck or tractor trailer. Also, is it also better for my Class A license to take the test in a manual instead of an auto? Uh, Epic, it's always better if you can do it in a manual transmission. Yes, automatic transmissions are coming into play with a lot of the larger companies and whatnot. However, there's still enough manual transmissions out there that you are going to be much more employable and have a better skill set to offer an employer if you can drive a manual transmission, especially in the beginning, because it's really tough in the beginning to get a job without any experience as a truck driver. Okay, and I'll tell you, uh, four years ago and I went back driving truck because I had a goal in place, because you know life had kind of hit the bottom, and my goal at that time was, I was gonna go back driving truck for eight months, I was gonna save a bunch of money, I was gonna go back to university, get my teaching certificate and I was going to teach high school. That was my, that was my goal at kind of the beginning of starting all of this. And so I had a goal in place and I got back in the truck and I was like, I can't do this. <laughs> so there's some things that we can't go back to. And so then I took this up and you know, never looked back and never, never disappointed about all this. Okay. And there was a point there that somehow eluded me at the end of that story. So that if it just kind of left, <laughs> that's what happened. Anyway, it'll come to me what I was trying to say. Uh, okay, Stevie, I'm working in the yard now. I'm on unemployment, so I see if I can pay for it. Okay, there you go. Excellent. Uh, trucking, tell us how to come from Jamaica to the States to drive. Uh, trucking, if you're in Jamaica and you want to go to the U.S., you're going to have to go through immigration first. You're going to, whether that's in the United States or here in Canada, you're going to have to get a work visa in either one of those countries. And oftentimes, if you're coming as a truck driver, you're going to need a company that you're going to work for. And not only are you going to need a company that you're going to work for, but they're probably going to need to sponsor you for a work visa. And that's going to be really tough especially right now with the pandemic. It's probably not gonna happen for you until after the pandemic. I'm not saying that you can't do it. I'm just saying that it's gonna be a little bit longer road than it would be if we didn't have this kind of crazy pandemic right now. Okay, Goose, I sat in a tractor simulator at work, but I couldn't double shift. I was hitting the houses and everything. Talk about demoralized after that. Yeah, Goose, uh, I wouldn't take that on board <laughs> too much with the simulator 
because truck simulators really aren't that good. I've been in them; they're they're really not that good. So, don't don't let that be a, a kind of measure of how well you would do in a tractor trailer. Okay, uh, Stevie, I start with air gas the week after next. Uh, Fifty nine k a year until I get my dream job. Excellent. So you're doing something in the interim. Blessed, how are you? Uh, family's doing well. Blessed, that's awesome. I hope you're doing as well as my two there on the island. Okay. Uh, okay, so trucking. Uh, best to send me an email. Rick at smartdrivetest.com and I'll definitely point you in the right direction in terms of filling out immigration and work visas and those types of things. Okay, Stevie, I need to I need the log class. Still don't really understand that stateside job is all over California, so I have to do the log correctly. Okay, and Stevie, we can probably help you out with that as well because we do have a U.S. logbook course over at the Smart Drive Test website, so if we can help you out with that. We'll definitely will. Uh, Rocky, sorry, Mr. Rick, I meant to work as I thought I added, not to eat my mistake. <laughs> definitely, it's all good. Okay, developing masters, what is the best GPS for truck drivers? Uh, master, I would have to look that up again. Send me an email, rick at smartdrivetest.com. All right, so we're going to wrap it up here for tonight. Uh, if you're watching on the replay, you're watching now live, hit the thumbs up button. Consider subscribing to the channel. And if you have any questions, leave a comment down in the comment section there. We'll definitely try to get back to you and answer any questions you have about finding a job, getting your dream job, working towards that getting education, retraining, going back to school. We will definitely uh, help you with all of that for sure. So, uh, you know, if you passed the driver's test in the last couple of weeks, congratulations. If you have a driver's test coming up in the next week or so, good luck on that. And remember, pick the best answer, not necessarily the right answer. Have a great night. Bye now.